Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here in Lumini and to speak at a VBAC conference. So um, I'm going to start with a brief overview and introduce the notation. And um, first, let me just say that this is all joint work with Simon Pepin Lerler. So we let C be a smooth projective curve over a field K um, of genus G. Uh, so G is always going to be the genus of my curve. And we're interested in looking at the stack bun. So I'm often going to drop the N and the D. So it's the stack of rank N degree D vector bundles on C. The goal of this project is to understand the motif of this stack in um, cohomology. Uh, so, so sorry, the, in, so, um, sorry the, to describe the motif of the stack. Um, uh, basically generalizing various results that are known about um, the cohomology of Bern. And here I mean in the sense of Voivodsky. So, so let me just start with um, recalling some of the properties of, uh, that are already known about Bun, And um, I'm going to focus on a sort of more gauge theoretic one, which is um, coming from Atiyah Bott's work on um, studying the topology of Bun, basically via gauge theory. So um, here we're going to be um, working over the complex numbers. Um, uh, over k is equal to c. And then, um, so a Tio Bott's description of the cohomology of Bun um, basically comes from looking at uh, the, um, the cohomology of the classifying space of the complex gauge group. Um, and what they do is they consider, well, one way that you can interpret what they do is you can consider the universal bundle over this stack and then look at its churn classes. In the uh, cohomology of the product and then take their um, Kunith components And these, these Kunith components uh, generate uh, the cohomology. So I'm um, lying here. And so um, actually we're going to um, hopefully, at the end, if there's time, come back to this sort of description in terms of churn classes and um, do a similar thing, but uh, motivically. So let me just start. So I'm not going to assume that every, anyone knows what a, a motive is, but let me give a sort of crash course in uh, motives. So, Um, the basic idea is that we have many different cohomology theories in um, algebraic geometry, so Betty cohomology, Aladic cohomology, but we also have cohomological, well, sort of more algebraic invariants, um, so things like uh, Chow groups. And the idea is to unify all of these together. 
So this goes back to uh, a growth in dig. So one would like a universal cohomology theory for varieties over k. which um, also captures uh, more algebra or geometric invariants. Um, and so let me be a little bit more precise. So one would like um, an abelian category MMK of mixed motifs over K, um, as well as a functor going from varieties to the derived category of this. Um, through which all cohomology theories factor. Theories for, for varieties over K uh, factor. And um, such that this category also encodes um, things like child groups. As its homomorphism groups. Um, so this is a want and not a, sorry, they, they, this category doesn't exist. Um, and um, so maybe I should emphasize the want here so it doesn't exist. Um, but instead, so um, people couldn't construct this category. So instead it was proposed by um, Balenson and Deline to try and construct this category instead. So this triangulated category. And this is um, then what Vygotsky did. So he constructed a triangulated category which basically plays the role of this derived category of this abelian category. So I'm going to write this as DMK and it comes with a um, functor like this. Uh, which sends a variety to um, its motive. Um, and um, uh, sorry, I'm going to always, through, through this talk, for just for simplicity, be working with uh, Q coefficients. This is um, a category of uh, motivic sheaves over um, K with Q coefficients. So there will be some, some results where we'll actually need that it's Q coefficients, and I'll try and remember to say where it's important that we're working with Q coefficients. Oh, I'm not supposed to touch the board, am I? Yeah, and I've already <laughs> broken the first rule. OK, so um, let me just give you some basic properties of uh, DM. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. This is why you don't touch the board. Yeah, OK. It's serious. Um, so properties of uh, DMK. So firstly, it's a tensor triangulated category. So on varieties, we have uh, the Cartesian product of varieties. And this um, corresponds to the tensor product here. And we have a um, Kunith isomorphism. Um, so that the motif of a Cartesian product of k varieties x and y is just the tensor product of their motifs. And then you can see that the unit for this um, is um, what's called a tape motif. So. so the unit is the motif of a point. And this is very special, so it gets the notation Q0. And then, in fact, um, you can take um, tensor products of these motifs, and also um, they're invertible. So we have, for all R in Z, we have Tate twists. And so, um, oh, sorry, where 
um, Q1 is um, coming from uh, basically a decomposition of the motif of P1. So um, this is maybe slightly um, non-standard notation. So a lot of people write this as um, Q1, 2, but I'm just packaging this together because we're always going to have the, the twists coming together in this talk. Um, then uh, the next thing we have, so by construction of this category is A1 homotopy invariance. So you have that the motif of X cross A1 is the same as the motif of X. And if you have a vector bundle um, on uh, a variety X, should I be alarmed by that noise or no? <laughs> so for a vector bundle um, V of X, um, we also have um, that the motive of V is the same as the motive of X. Okay. Um, so the, uh, maybe I will just focus on the most important properties. So then there's also um, a Geisen sequence, uh, so a Geisen triangle. So if we've got um, a pair of um, smooth varieties, so we've got so a closed uh, sub-variety and both are smooth, and uh, C is the co-dimension of uh, Z and X, then um, we have a distinguished triangle in this triangulated category, um, going from the open complement to um, the motif of X, and then um, you have um, a Geisen map to the motif of Z twisted um, by um, this co-dimension shift here, so I'm just going to write this always as M, Z, and then C, just for brevity. Um, and um, so you have a distinguished triangle like this. And then there's also things like um, projective bundle formulae. So things that you know that happen in cohomology also happen here. Um, you have Mayer via torus sequences, um, Poincare duality, and let me just quickly explain the relationship with algebraic cycles. For a smooth variety, and uh, any natural number i, um, we have that the um, i Chow group of x, um, so let's tensor with q because we're working with q coefficients, is um, a homomorphism group in this category DM, and it's the homes from the motif of X to um, the tape twist corresponding to I. And so a particular example of this is churn classes. So e.g. if you've got um, V of X, a vector bundle, Then um, you have CI X, which, uh, C, so, sorry, CIV, which you can think of as a motif, uh, as a morphism of motifs going from the motif of X to QI. Okay. And um, there are also realization functors as well um, in cohomology, but maybe I will 
um, skip that due to. So I just say that there are realization functors, so there are uh, various different ones. So, like Betty realization, Aladdic realization, and so on. And um, there's also things like uh, compactly supported motifs. And so, in fact, the motif that we're looking at is um, behaving more like a homology theory. So, um, it's this functor M up above is covariant. Um, and um, there's also a relative version of this. So you can replace K by some scheme S, and um, you can replace your coefficient ring by some other ring, um, provided you invert the characteristic of K. OK, so, but um, we want to talk about motors of stacks, so that's the, the next part. And there are several different ways in which you, you could do this, but we want one where we can actually compute with it. Um, and so the most relevant thing for us is um, really Totaro's work on defining Chow groups and motifs of quotient stacks. So um, this really comes from basically in topology. So, so in algebraic topology, if you um, if you're interested in looking at the cohomology of a stack, of a quotient stack, then um, this is just, you can just define this to be the G equivariant cohomology of X, and then you can use the Borel construction to uh, compute this. So then you quotient by the diagonal action of G here. And basically, we want an algebraic approximation to this. Um, and um, so, so Taro suggests what you should do here is um, if you're looking at the stack X mod G, then in, instead you can consider vector bundles on X mod G, which contain a large open subset, which is a scheme. Um, so, so you have to consider increasingly large um, vector bundles and increasingly large um, open sub-schemes. Um, so consider vector bundles. On X mod G. Um, containing a large open set that is a scheme. Um, but unfortunately, so for those of you who are familiar with Bun, this isn't a quotient stack, but it's quite close to being a quotient stack in the sense that um, you can approximate it by quotient stacks. So um, for this, we, we introduce a notion of what we call um, an exhaustive stack, which is basically a stack which can be which has a sort of filtration and um, an increasing sequence of vector bundles on these open things which uh, have very large open subsets, which are schemes. So let me give the definition. So a algebraic stack uh, X is um, exhaustive if there exists A um, increasing open filtration by quasi compact stacks. So let me just check my notation. So um, so xn into xn plus 1. And then all of these are contained inside x. And a sequence of vector bundles, one on for each n. <laughs> with um, a, with um, an injection for each n, going from the 
nth one to the uh, n plus one one restricted to the previous one. So. Um, so this definition continues, as well as closed substacks. In um, each vector bundle, such that, um, so firstly, the co-dimension of these closed substacks is going to infinity with n. And so the open complements are becoming larger and larger and better approximations, and these open complements should be schemes. In particular, we can uh, associate a motive to each of these. And then the third point is that you somehow want some compatibility between these bad loci. So that's point three. So if you look at the maps um, Fn, and you take the pre-image of Wn plus one restricted to Xn, then this should be contained in Wn, so for all n. And in particular, this means that f sends un, so fn sends un to un plus 1. Okay. Yes? So are these bundles dimensional? No, they, they all have finite rank, but their ranks are going to go to infinity. So I will do an example in a minute for BGM, and then I think it will be very clear. Okay, but let me just, um, before I do that, uh, explain what then the definition of the motif of the stack is. And um, here, it's going to be important that the stack is smooth, so I will explain why very soon. So um, for an exhaustive sequence, so for, for, a, for a, a sequence as above, so uh, we define the motif of the stack X to be the homotopy co-limit of the motifs of these UNs. Where the transition maps are coming from these maps FN here. And this is well-defined. Yes, this is well-defined. So I'm going to, so this is lying in DMK. So it doesn't depend on these choices, and this is where we need actually the smoothness. So let me um, say that. So this definition is independent. Of these choices. And um, basically, um, what the main ingredients are in the proof of this lemma is firstly, A1 homotopy invariance, and secondly, a um, key lemma, which we're going to use later, so I'm going to write it on the board, which is that, and this is where you need the smoothness. So let, um, let us consider a um, inductive system of open immersions of smooth uh, schemes or varieties. So let UN be an inductive system of open immersions. Of smooth schemes over K. Um, then 
um, and assume that the co-dimension of the complement is going to infinity. Then the and then basically the homotopy co-limit of the motifs of the UNs coincides with the same thing for the XNs. And um, so this really uses vanish so known vanishing of um, motivic cohomology. Okay. And it, it's vital, and, and this is where you, you need the smoothness, because if um, X is a smooth stack, then all of these open substacks are going to be smooth, and the vector bundles on them are going to be smooth, and so then the UN is going to be smooth as well. Okay, so let me come back to um, the question of um, an example. So, because of, obviously this definition is um, all very well, but you need to cook up such a, a sequence of vector bundles. And this example is due to Totaro. So we're going to consider X to be BGM. So the classifying stack of the multiplicative group. So then a vector bundle on, on this stack is just a um, representation of GM. So we take um, um, the vector bundle corresponding to the representation where you're just acting um, diagonally with constant weight one, um, so for all n. Then um, inside here you have um, the closed substack where the action is not free here, so that's the origin mod gm. And then the open part is everything apart from the origin, so And then this is actually, rather than a stack, this is actually a, a variety. It's Pn minus 1. And so in this case, you get that the motive of BGM is just the homotopy co of these motives. And so then the, the projective bundle formula that I didn't write down tells you that this motif is a sum of tape motifs. And so you actually get um, that this is a sum over all J. And then the, the motifs like this, QJ. OK. Um, and the other example of an exhaustive stack is going to be bun. So that's going to be most of the talk. Um, so you can also define. Um, various, so you can also extend many of the properties that we discussed up above to stacks. So, for example, you have Kunith isomorphisms, A1 homotopy invariants, and so on. Um, functoriality is a little bit more complicated, but you can do it for reasonably behaved maps. But in fact, it would make more sense then to work with a different definition of motifs of stacks. So, um, let me now come to our results on the motif of bun. And um, so let, let me say that um, this work uh, very much relies on um, an old paper of Biffe, Guillaume, and Letizia, who were interested in looking at the eladic cohomology of, uh, um, well, actually not the stack, but the moduli space of semi-stable vector bundles. But in some ways, they, they, they use the stack. Um, so they were interested in the eladic cohomology of bun to a certain extent. And um, they, they studied it using, um, by rigidifying the problem, by using matrix divisors, which 
uh, this notion of matrix divisors will essentially give us this sequence that we're interested in here. So let me just uh, explain the proposition, um, and then we'll, we'll see how, how they're used. So, so the stack bun is exhaustive. Okay. So the proof, so firstly we need to find a filtration uh, by open substacks, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to filter it by maximal slopes. So, given a vector bundle, E, you can define its maximal slope to be the maximum of the slopes of all sub bundles of E. So this is just the slope of the first vector bundle appearing in the hardin Aristema filtration of E. OK, um, so then take a sequence, um, UL, of uh, rational numbers. Uh, which goes to infinity. Then um, you can consider the um, substack of bun consisting of all uh, vector bundles with uh, maximal slope less than mu l, or less than or equal to mu l. So. so with u max less than or equal to mu l. So this is rather convenient about the talk yesterday because uh, it turns out that this family is bounded. And so what that means is um, that, uh, again, you can find a quartz scheme that um, parameterizes um, all of these sheaves. And so in fact, it turns out that this, this stack is a quotient stack. So, so in particular, it's um, quasi compact, and it, it's also an open substack. So, so bun less than or equal to mu l is an open substack and a quotient stack. Okay, so then the second step is to find these. Um, sequence of vector, uh, vector bundles, and this is done using matrix divisors. So I'm not going to assume you know what a matrix divisor is, but it's just a, a generalization of a divisor to higher rank. So, um, so for a divisor D on C, We consider um, div D. So uh, as a set, this is just um, the set of all subsheaves of OD, of, of OD plus N. So maybe it's important to say this is subsheaves, yeah? um, such that E has rank N and degree D. So this has a natural forgetful map to burn. Um, and um, in, in fact, this, this, um, this isn't just a set. This is actually a smooth projective variety. So it's actually a quartz scheme parameterizing torsion quotients of this um, sheaf of a fixed degree. So it turns out that this is a smooth so, the, so projective is clear because it's a quartz scheme, but the smoothness comes from the fact that you're working on a curve and you're looking at torsion quotients. And if you have um, a larger effective divisor, so if you have uh, D prime uh, bigger than D, then you have a map going from OD to OD prime, and so this gives you an inductive system. Uh, 
and all of these maps are compatible. And so, in fact, you can construct an in variety here. Um, So I just call that div, and I'm going to drop the n's and the d's like I did for bun. So I div and there's this forgetful map where you just forget that you're included in some uh, fixed sum of line bundles to, to bun. And the thing is that this is quite close to being a vector bundle. Um, so let me be a little bit more precise. So um, if we, um, now I have to fix a very specific sequence mu l, so I have to look at my notes because otherwise I get it wrong. So um, we fix a divisor d, uh, an effective divisor, and let mu l be l times the degree of d. And then, so this is going to infinity with l, yeah, which is important, minus 2g plus 1, and then <coughs> minus 1 over n squared. Um, so this is a sequence of rational numbers. Um, and then um, we notice that for all, so it's a, a specific sequence. So if you take E, a um, vector bundle with slope less than or equal to mu L, um, you see that the H1 of E dual tensor um, O L D plus n is equal to zero. So this is just um, a relatively simple computation. I mean, so if this was non-zero, then you'd have a corresponding h zero via their duality. And then you can just show that this map of sheaves must be zero by using things that you know about maps between vector bundles with prescribed maximal slopes. Okay. Then, um, so for each L, you have a vector bundle. which I'm going to call VL on uh, bun less than or equal to mu L, whose um, fiber over a particular E is just the Holmes from E to OLD plus N. And now um, we just want to um, relate this now to these divs. So if we look at the locus inside here of injective homs, so let's call that UL. So this is VL injective. Um, then this is precisely an open um, subscheme of divs. So it's um, div, it's an open subscheme in div LD, and it's of all um, bundles with slope less than or equal to mu L, uh, a maximal slope less than or equal to mu L. And then, so this is the open one, and then the closed one we have inside here is um, WL, which is the non-injective Holmes. So they're, they're not coming from the, um, from div, but uh, the, the point is that the co-dimension bounds for um, this closed, closed, um, closed substack were actually already computed, so by Bifegier and Letizia, so they basically compute that um, the co-dimension of these bad homomorphisms goes to infinity, so you don't have to worry about them. And so, um, and then you can actually verify that this gives us a um, exhaustive sequence of vector bundles. So,
And so this means that we can now um, say what is the motif of burn. Yeah, let me just, so then the sequence, so VL over bun less than or equal to mu L with the closed um, substacks WL is an exhaustive, it, it, it makes bun into an exhaustive stack. So then, um, so that, that completes the, the proof of this proposition. But then now we have that the motif of bun is just the homotopy co-limit of the motifs of the ULs. And each of these ULs is just an open uh, sub variety in this in this quad scheme div okay and um, so then the, the first um, theorem is that actually you can remove this less than or equal to mu l so What we, we use, um, so the proof is that we use this, which I hope is still on the board, this key lemma. Um, so use the key lemma for um, the um, open immersions given by div less than or equal to mu l inside div. Sorry. And then again, the co-dimension bounds are already um, given in this paper of Bifigur and Letizia, so um, it's it's relatively straightforward from there. So then the next step is so we have these um, smooth projective varieties, and we'd like to understand their motifs. And for this, we can use a circle action. which will induce for us, so this action of the multiplicative group will induce a Biel and Nicky Barula decomposition. So um, if you pick a generic GM inside uh, the automorphism group of the sheaf um, OD plus N, then um, this acts on div D and the fixed points have the form so, so the GM fixed points. Well, if, if this GM is generic, it's the same as the fixed points for the diagonal maximal torus. Um, so so they, they decompose as a direct sum of line bundles then. So, mm. uh, Sorry, yeah, the sign is the wrong way, so minus f i plus d, yeah. Um, and um, so if you let the degree of f i be m i, um, then you see that the, you get a tuple, which is actually a partition. Of, um, 
So then you need to work out what the degree is, but uh, I have it written in my notes. So of n degree d minus d. Um, and so you see that the gm fixed locus here, so that this, this, this you can think of as being as a point in um, a product of symmetric powers of the curve. So cm you just define to be cm1 crossed by cmn. And then the GM fixed locus is um, just uh, the disjoint union of all of these um, for each different partition M. And then um, you, in fact, get the decomposition of the um, motif of the whole, uh, well, uh, sorry, first the decomposition of the variety. Um, Oh no. Um, by just flowing under the GM action to the limit as t goes to zero. And you could also flow to t goes to infinity, but uh, then you get a different decomposition. So yes, if you flow under the GM action, so th then you get um, <coughs> so now locally closed subvarieties. So these are all the points whose limit under T flows to um, the fixed locus component corresponding to the M. So. So you have this map going like this, and actually this map uh, is an affine vibration. So um, the motif of this is actually the same thing as the motif of this. Um, and so these, this gives you a full decomposition of div. In, um, with partitions of n degree d minus d. And um, in fact, there's also a, um, so this also induces a, a decomposition of the cohomology. So the cohomology of this variety can be described completely in terms of the cohomology of the fixed points. And the same is true for the motifs. So this is um, work of Brosnan and Karpenko. So we have a motivic BB decomposition. And so um, let me just write it in this example rather than writing the general thing. So you have that the motif of div D is the direct sum over all partitions M. And then, um, so um, you have the motif of the fixed point locus. And then there's a shift by the codimension because there's going to be a Geisen map appearing somewhere here. So, um, so where, so maybe I can write it here. So the codimension of um, a stratum here. is the sum from i equals 1 to n. And then you have um, mi times by i minus 1. OK, so that's the co-dimension. OK, so then um, the second theorem, uh, together with Simon, is that, <clears throat> so directly from this, we have that the motive of burn is the homotopy 
co-limit over L, and then we have these direct sums now. Um, oh, sorry, there should be an L now. Uh, an L degree D minus D, and then And uh, moreover, so um, so in fact, this, this holds for any uh, coefficient ring. So firstly, if um, if the curve is P1, then symmetric powers of P1 are just projective spaces. So their motifs are also Tate. Then in this case, M1 is an infinite dimensional Tate motif. And the second point, and now it's important to be working with QO co coefficients. Is um, that the um, motif of Bun lies in the um, localizing subcategory of uh, uh, DM? which is generated just by the motive of the curve. And so in this point, why we need um, Q coefficients is then that, um, so all we need to show is that all of these motives lie in this, this category, but then you have that, you can actually define the um, symmetric power of a motive Well, OK, maybe let me do it not as a tuple, but just as a, a given R. So we take the R symmetric power of the curve, and then this is just the R symmetric power of the motif of C. And this is a direct factor of the R tensor product of the motif of C with itself. And so um, everything is generated by the motif of the curve. Um, okay, so um, so then in the remaining time, um, I want to talk about actually um, a formula for the motive of Bun. And this will come back to the Atiyah Bot description in terms of churn classes. So because, um, I mean, you would sort of naturally expect that what holds in cohomology, well, you would hope that what holds, holds in cohomology would also be able to lift a motive since the arguments are sufficiently geometric. Um, and so we have a, a conjecture for what we think the motive of Bun is. going to um, need to assume that um, C has a rational point. Um, so because then this um, gives us a decomposition of the motive, so just taking the, the map going from spec K to C gives you, so that in fact splits off a direct factor, so you get that the motive of C is, so you have a copy of Q0, and then plus the reduced motif of the curve, um, which again actually splits off into two factors. Um, and if you take the universal bundle um, on bun cross C, then, um, so you can also define uh, churn classes for for vector bundles on, on exhaustive stacks as well. Um, so this will be an element 
in M bun cross C, and then Q I. And so the motive of bun cross the motive of C is just the motive of bun tends to the motive of C. So, and then you can move this across to the other side. So this is the same as the Holmes in DM from M bun to now M C, and then the, the dual here tensor with I. And then using Poincare duality, this um, M C dual. So C is smooth and projective. So um, M C dual is just M C minus one. So this whole thing here is M C I minus one. So you can think of the Chern classes as giving you a map from M bun to M C I minus one. And you can also look at reduced Chern classes. Which um, go to the reduced um, motive here, twisted by i minus one. So then, um, um, so if um, yeah, maybe I try and use some colours. So then, um, you can use all of these together. So if you use the reduced first churn class of the universal bundle together with, and then the second through to the nth one. So then this gives you a map from the motive of bun to, um, so what do we have? So first we have um, the reduced motive of C. And then we have um, the motif of C, and then with various twists here, coming from these other factors. So we have Q, so if we have two, then we have two minus one, so Q uh, one. Through to Q N. Um, Oh no, sorry, I've done something wrong here. Uh, uh, yeah, no, n minus one. Yeah. Um, and let's call this thing on the right, let's call this um, w, then, um, and let's call this c. So then you can um, take the symmetric powers of this. And it gives you a map from n bun to the symmetric powers of, of this motif w. Um, and uh, our conjecture is that basically this is an isomorphism. So, but I will also write down what is specifically this, this thing here. So this sim dot w. So we have that M bun uh, N D is, and so there will be two pieces. So one coming from the first Chern class and the other one coming from the other. So we get, um, so the green parts of the first Chern class gives us the um, motif of bun 1 D, and then the other part gives us the motif of um, bun S R N. So maybe let me write it more explicitly what they, those, these both are. So this is the motive of uh, BGM, tends to the motive of the Jacobian of C. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we have a product of zeta functions. So, oh, I've got the wrong chalk. So then tensor, and so we have, um, n minus one here, zeta functions, so from i equals one to n minus one, and then the zeta function of c uh, with coefficients q i. Okay. So that's basically, so that's just the symmetric product of the mc tensor q i. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I've been told I should finish, but maybe let me just say that we can um, prove this um, conjecture, modulo a conjecture on basically how the transition maps in this inductive system behave on, uh, on Chow groups, actually, but we, we don't understand this conjecture about the, the Chow groups. So, okay, let me end here. Thank you.